Hello everyone! My name is Serafi, and I'm happy to meet you all. Today, I'll be continuing my Meet the Guru segment with another one of my colleagues. Uh, today, we'll be sitting down with the Guru Code Talker, also known as the Code Talker Guru Millennium or Mill. Mill, thank you so much for sitting down with me. All right. My pleasure, Serafi. All right. So, uh, Mill is not as active in the server as he used to be. So uh, this is actually the first time that he and I have had a conversation. Um, so this is going to be uh, an interesting discussion. Uh, Mill, why don't you tell us about yourself a little bit? All right. Hi, I'm Millennium, also known as Mill. Uh, you might know me as that one guy in, in, in the Discord server you might be in that is somehow always a moderator. I don't know how I managed to do it. Um, I also, I mean, just generally a very code talker guy. I love code talkers, always have been since they first released. Uh, the code talker was one of my favorite monsters just ever. Um, cybers in general, brains, all that. It's just my specialty. If there's if a deck is cybers or has a cybers card in it, I've played it. All right. That's pretty much. Thank you very much. So. Let's talk about what role you play for this server. So what do you do for the Guild of Gurus? Well, Guild of Gurus, um, I'm, as, all, as mentioned earlier, um, the Code Talker Guru. So I'm all things Code Talker in my, in my channel. But I'm also, I think, fourth in the hierarchy when it comes to the servers, how it's run. After Cyber cubes and Kali uh, resonance okay so, thank you so you yeah. you for, fulfill an administrative role as well uh, great um, yep now you mentioned that you like decode talker um, so code talkers is typically one of the decks it is most famous for being able to play its entire extra deck in one turn so tell me about extra linking and about how code talkers and the, the Synet Codec spell, spell work really well with your strategies? Well, so Code Talkers, back in the day before, uh, God damn it, I already forgot the pack name, but you know, the one that dropped Firewall Singularity, Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Singularity, and the new Firewall support, uh, whatever. Before that, the deck's strategy was to make an extra link, which is where you control link monsters in both extra monster zones, which can only be done in the specific conditions that I'll get into later. You want the, the plan back then was to have an extra link while giving your opponent Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, which is a, a, a monster that, if it's sent to the graveyard, summons itself to your opponent's field. If it's normal summoned, um, it summons a link monster from the graveyard so that it points to Ibli. And while you control Ibli, or the player who controls it, not you specifically. The player who controls it can't special summon monsters instead of except for link monsters. And so, if you have both Ibli on your opponent's field and are in possession of two link monsters in the extra monster zones without giving your opponent any link zones by pointing arrows to their side, they are effectively unable to special summon any monsters whatsoever. And so it was basically just a very, very roundabout way of, like, vanity's emptiness. Lock. You know. Right, and uh, that includes kaijus as well, even though you could Yes, you cannot kaiju. Because of Ibli, which prevents whoever controls it from special summoning, you cannot kaiju because kaijus are special summons. You cannot activate infinite impermanence from your hand because you control a card. You can't activate evenly matched from the hand because you also control a card. So you can't use that. You can't use Lightning Storm. Dark Ruler no more doesn't stop Ibli, so it doesn't out the lock. Um, really, the only counters to the lock are, you know, uh, Forbidden Droplet which sends uh, any number of cards you control, doesn't negate any number of cards your opponent controls, so you can send Ibli while you control it by activating Droplet. And any level 5 or 6 monster that you can just normal summon. 
because tribute summons are not locked out. Well, there's been a, I think a resurgence of Book of Moon lately, so you could also book, book of Moon. Moon. Actually, you're right. Book of Moon, Book of Moon, anything that flips her face down. So that well, that was the old strategy of the deck. The new strategy involves less Ibli and more just general interaction spam. We use cards that generate a lot of interac advantage on interaction, uh, like Cyanite Code deck, where whenever a Code Talker monster is summoned from the extra deck, you can target it, and then search your deck for a monster with the same attribute. Cyanite Code deck, I mean, is a yeah, Cyanite Code deck doesn't have a once per turn, but it has a once per attribute. Basically, it's like a very unique effect and uh, restriction, and so that means that in theory you could summon six code talkers with different attributes during a turn and search six cards from your deck. And cyber monsters, and just cyber as a type in general, is very good at extending. If you've seen stuff like Mathmex play, if you've seen stuff like Salamangrates, Marincess, extension out the wazoo. So we use that to fuel big monsters like Firewall Dragon. Everyone knows Firewall Dragon, especially if you were playing during 18, 2018. Firewall Dragon Singularity, which is that new card I mentioned earlier that came out in a recent pack. Um, I still cannot remember the name. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we use Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid in certain builds with Rituals and Fusion support that Cybers has. And just, in general, we make big boards that do a lot. The average end board for Code Talkers is a U-Link consisting of G Golem Crystal Heart in the left, co-linked to Trans Code Talker, which is the Earth Code Talker that can reborn any Link monster, Cyber's Link monster, from the graveyard, which is like really fucking good. Uh, which is also calling to Firewall Absolutely. Dragon Singularity in the middle zone. Um, what was that? No, I was I was saying absolutely, yeah. Transcode Talker yeah, is a fantastic card. Fantastic card. Transcode Talker is probably the second or third best Code Talker out of them all, behind, of course, Axis Code Talker. Everyone knows that one. And depending on who you ask, the Code Talker heat soul. Um, yeah, Transcode Talker would be co-linked to Firewall Dragon Singularity, which is a Link 6, the second of its kind, that while you have uh, any number of fusion, Xyz, Synchro, or, or Ritual monsters in your graveyard that are also Cybers, you can target that number of cards on your opponent's field and or graveyard and return them to the hand, which that's both able to bounce monsters, spells, traps, things in the graveyard, so it's a very good interruption. It's also going to be co-linked to Firewall Dragon, the OG, because Firewall Dragon is still good even if it got eroded into, into the ground. It used to be able to basically summon any number of monsters from your hand as long as you had, you know, the materials on the field. But now it's just, if a card that it points to is sent to the graveyard, you can summon a Cybers monster from your hand, and it also gains the ability to bounce a number of cards that your opponent controls any any number of cards on the field and our graveyards that can be yours too to recycle cards. That's also one of the reasons they got eroded. Um, but it can bounce any number of cards in the field and our graveyard that uh, corresponds to the number of cards it's calling to, which is usually two considering it has access code zones right, arrows, and that would be usually calling to something that has a that doesn't have any up arrows to, to prevent, you know, your opponent from special summoning if you have Ibli. That's usually uh, Salamangre Bailinx or Cyber's Wicked, which Bailinx uh, searches Salamangre Sanctuary, which is used to keep Ibli from attacking into a monster and destroying itself. And prevent, pre uh, it's, a, it's just a Link 1 for Cyber, so that's very good because it just requires any level 4 or lower. Cyber's monster, I, or higher, not lower. Well, no, level four or lower, yeah. Wait, I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a while since I played like legitimate Yu-Gi-Oh. I was just playing Master Duel a lot, and Code Talkers are not good there, uh, or anywhere in general. Man, I am really ranting, aren't I? Uh, yes. Well, uh, I was going to ask you, 
since you mentioned quite a while back now that you summon monsters of every attribute during your turn due to that continuous spell, Synac Kodak. Why do Code Talkers not use the arrival at Cyber Static Mister? Well, the arrival Cyber Static Mister is just not a very good card in general. Like, yeah, it's a big, it's a big monster with removal and it's a towers, but the requirement of having just six link materials on the field for a mediocre end board where you can use that to summon multiple monsters that do more than combined than a rival. For example, Firewall Dragon Singularity is just straight up better arrival because it can get bigger very easily considering it gains 2,500 attack for each card it bounces with its effect. And it has a monster reborn if a card is sent to the graveyard that it points to, which is very good. It's just not worth playing Singularity. I not think damn it. Arrival. God, my brain is everywhere. I got I got what you were saying. Thank you. Alright. So that was a great discussion about to co talkers, thank you. Now it really was not. I am <laughs> everywhere tonight. <laughs> You're fine. I'm sure everyone's going to enjoy this discussion. I will of course edit this video so that every card that you just ranted about is on the screen so people can kind of understand what you're saying. Uh, but I got I it. Even it. <laughs> I didn't even finish talking about the end board with how fucking scattered I am. <laughs> um okay, so let's let's bounce back to Cybers in general. Um so you said that you like cyber sex in general. Uh, I I think because you said that you like link brains. Um so so that extends to obviously Mathmex, Salamangrate, uh, I guess Marincess. Um What other cyber stacks do you like? Well, like I said, I, I like every cyber stack. That is Adagnister, which is, you know, we just talked about Adagnister in a little bit with Arrival. Code Talkers, that's, you know, my main deck. Um, Marincess, which is basically the same thing as Adagnister, but better. Uh, math mech, which is honestly, like in my honest opinion, the best and most competitive cyber stack because of fucking Laplation is just such a good card with super factorial and circular. Circular, everyone knows circular. Uh, that also includes G Golems. I mentioned that a little bit with G Golem and Crystal Heart. They're not very good at all whatsoever. And Salamangrates. Salamangrates, you, you, you mentioned those. Hey, which, hey, but. If anyone played in 2019, the OG Salamangrates. Gazelle just came back to three mm -hmm. in like four days, three days. So, uh, so, so, so G Golems might not be Golems. good, but at least they're not as bad as they were in the anime where he had to use Cost Down. Oh, they, yes. They stuck Cost G Down Golems onto the card. The anime <laughs> were so bad. <laughs> um, then okay. again, the anime is very low power compared to the actual card. Game well, I mean, not yeah, Reigns. were absolutely terrible. Reigns well, was yeah, so high power compared to all the other Well, Reigns is definitely the most high power of all of the animes, just because of how recent it is, and the decks that came out in it with the mechanics that it had. For example, we got Rockets from Reigns, we got Code Talkers, we got Salamangrates, Marincess, Altergeists. We don't talk about Hydra Drive. I don't even know that you could make Hydra Drive work because they're all Link ones. So you'd have to have like work. eight Link ones. They're not in the actual card game. They're not. They're, they're not real. They're anime only. They're bad. They're really, really bad. Yeah, rip. And they and they gave it to two characters for some reason. Well, I'm pretty sure it was one character at the beginning, and then that character. It was it was Haru like, and um and, and his the, brother the Bowman. Right? Yeah, yeah, they both yeah. had. It. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, it's been a little bit. I, I, I like Reigns, too. Um, all right, let's see. Um, Reigns is the best one. I will not take MBT's Season 3 Slander. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to put that I'm gonna have to put that up now. So, okay. More editing for me to do, but the, I will put context on the screen for everyone else. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, moving away from Master Duel for a moment. Um... Were you surprised at the power level that Salamangrate was released with in Duel Links? Was it too much, or was Absolutely it not? Absolutely not. I expected it to be good. The moment I saw the cards we were getting, I knew it would be good. It was one of the best decks back in 2019 uh, in the TCG. Oh, hold on. And that power level was so much better than Duel Links at the at I, release. Hang, hang on, Mill. I think you're misunderstanding my question. I was asking... Oh, wait. It, 
Oh, I was wait, asking... you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I, I, I know what you're asking now. All right, let's redo this real quick. Okay, uh, so... Wind it back. More editing for you. Were you surprised at the power level that Konami chose to release Salamangrate at in Duel Links? And do you think it was too much or not enough for the deck? I'm really not surprised. Konami needed a, to ship with something that was a draw for the Vrains world. And Salamangra, which is very, which is which was a very cheap and powerful deck at release, um, was the obvious choice for Konami to you know push on the populace, because it would not only make it so that people would use their new world, because Soulburner was the character that used it, Salamangra, it's, uh, I'm talking about, but it also uh, made people want to go into the the newest box, you know, which. They want everyone to go into boxes, so they just constantly power creep dual links. And I think it was okay. I don't mind the tier zero. I'm biased. Fuck you. Fair enough. Although it is kind of sad that they still have Ibli at three, so you can't play Ibli and Salamangrate Circle in the same deck. Well, good news. Lady Debug is getting put on like something. I forgot. Two or three? Lim limit two, yeah. Yeah, limit two. So you're gonna be able to play Lady Debug and Ibli. <laughs> Still not gonna be able to like use that. But yeah, rest in peace, Ibli and Duel Links. Uh, yeah, no, that uh, was that was actually the next question. Do you think there's a way for them to balance Nightmare Corruptor, Ibli, and Duel Links, or is the three card yes. zone just? There actually is a way to balance it. Release better level fives. That's it. Hmm. Okay. Release. You know? Release cards that people would be willing to tribute something with. Um. Uh, you know, to be to be completely legit here, that was a, that was more of a joke response. Oh, fair um, enough. <laughs> the way that they can do that better is to release, you know, more power cards. I know that sounds very stupid, right? Considering right now the power cards are the strongest part of Duel Links. Every deck and their mothers playing stuff like uh, Ice Dragon's Prison, Book of Moon, Cosmic Cyclone, you know, all that stuff. But in reality, the Ibli Lock. It really doesn't stack up very well, considering, you know, Dark Hole, right? Fair enough. Cards like Dark Hole, more Book of Moon clones like Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse and Duel Links would actually be more balanced than it is in TCG, considering Duel Links. Your opponent drawing is m much, much worse for you than in TCG, right? Considering they have a much thinner deck. And they'll get the cards they want to draw much much more often. I will I will um, admit that I am very surprised we got Book of Eclipse before, or we did not get Book of Eclipse before we got Ice Dragon's Prison. That was very shocking. Right? Then again, Duel Links does want to push traps a lot more than than spells as removal, considering they're just so useless in TCG, outside of very niche stuff that's usually not even used like a trap, like Imperm. Right. That's correct. Um. Okay. So, what are you hoping for with Marincess and Math Mech in Dueling? So, we've got a few cards so far. Um, obviously, Marincess is probably going to get more support because there's a character associated with the deck. But, um, I, are you thinking that cards like Final Sigma can come to Duel Links? Or, what are you expecting for when they actually release a box around Marincess or Math Mech? Okay, Final Sigma... That's a no. Konami will not let Final Sigma into Duel Links, even if it is, you know, a very high uh, cost monster to summon. The power floor of Duel Links is not ready for a, a 3,000 towers that can one-shot you, right? I even if that. you know it's it's been it's been done kind of one shots. OTKs are. You know, part of Duel Links, part of life, part of Yu-Gi-Oh. But just the ability to have a big fuck you monster, right? Akin to Blue Eyes back in like 1998, right? Like, you summon that shit, you better hope you have the out. I mean, they better hope, not you. Uh, it's just... Final Sigma. You can make it pretty easily, too. We don't have, you know, normal Sigma, right? Or Geomathmic Sigma. When I say normal Sigma, I'm talking about the level 4 monster, which is, you know, the tuner. The main tuner that you're supposed to use for Mathmex. Yeah. We don't have Diameter either, which is another the other tuner. 
We also don't have Circular, which is the best card in the entire fucking deck. We don't have... I don't think we have uh, Nabla. We don't have a lot of the best cards. We don't have Super Factorial. Just in general... Right, but, but which cards are you... release... Which cards are you thinking they, they will release? release? A box. Um, if they do release a box for Mathmex specifically, the cards they would release are Geo Mathmex Sigma, not Final Sigma, the level 8 Synchro, right? That one, it's kind of a more watered down, and it's just like a beater instead of, you know, a, a Towers. They would probably release Diameter with maybe, if we're lucky, maybe Alan Bershin. I highly doubt that they would add Super Factorial with Laplacian. Super Factorial also wouldn't see that much play in Duel Links with the three limit, uh, the three uh, zone, because Super Factorial, in order to summon Laplacian, needs three zones empty. Uh, we could probably get Division and Multiplication. I don't know if those are in the game yet. I forgot. Yeah, but um, uh, but uh, Super Factorial. So. <laughs> People forget, Super Factorial can also be used to Synchro stuff. You're right, you're right. Super Factorial can also be used to Quick Synchro. Uh, so you can also summon, you know, Sigma or Final Sigma if they add those. But again, you need to have open zones, which in Duel Links, the zones, they're very, very tight. Yeah, but at the very least, uh, a level 8 can only needs two zones. Um, True, but the... it would be Sigma, so it would probably see play if only Sigma was added. If only Final Sigma is added... If they and if they add super factorial, if there is a, a math mech deck, it's probably very, very reliant on super factorial and sigma, which just it would not be very, you know, good. Yeah, but I'm worried about if they opinion. if they add super, uh, sigma, I'm just gonna be worried about it's a level eight tuner. So is that gonna spawn a whole bunch of fish balkan nonsense? Okay, hot take. I love Bish Balkan. Fight me. Oh my god. <laughs> we're not fucking card. We're not getting into this. <laughs> we have too much I'm else to talk into... about it. Have you seen the Master Duel FTK? I have seen With plenty of I have mm -hmm. seen plenty of MFT. Listen, listen. The the one you mean you're talking about the one with 10,000 dragon. I have seen that one as well. Yes, I have. It's, I'm talking about the 10,000 dragon one. It's fucking hilarious and I will not take any slander. <laughs> On that shit. Big they should, Vulcan is the goat. They okay? should not have I, unbanned Invoker. Well, yeah, of course Invoker should have stayed banned. <laughs> just, what the hell? Invoker is just such a good card. Yes. Mm, yes, I'm going to summon a warrior monster from my deck. Fun. <laughs> we already have uh, Reinforcement in the Army, which is still limited to one to this day. Because adding well, a warrior to your hand is crazy enough. People always are gonna say like, "Oh, well, MX Saber Invoker is a rank three. It's not a very good, you know, level." To be fair, level I... rank threes are just as good as rank fours. It's just that there's more rank fours, and by uh, by comparison, and you know, bias from how much we've used rank fours in general, because level four is the best, you know, level. People think that rank fours are much better than rank threes, but in reality, rank threes are just as playable, if not, you know. Like, have you seen Phantom Knights, right? I have seen, yes. We have Tour Guide from the Underworld. But the, the, uh, I, here's a hot take. Invoker is only banned because they refuse to ban Isold. Isold is so much worse than Invoker, but they definitely can't exist together at the same time. That is a very hot take, and I don't agree with it. I'm sorry. Isold, Isold does getting... the same thing. It, it literally summons a warrior from your deck. Yeah, but you have to play fucking four Garnets if you want to play, like, Arma Knight. Oh no, I have to play four Garnets to bring out Arma Knight. I don't have to bring- you don't have to bring out a level four, you can bring out a level one. What level one is worth summoning off of my soul? It, I mean, if you want to just climb into a Link 3. And besides, there are 60 card decks that still use, like, they just put four Garnets and they never draw them. Yeah, it's just it's a 60 card deck, yes. But are those, like, good? No, they're not good, but that, that's the problem. The problem is that Isolde and, um, 
But, well, okay. The the real problem is that Armageddon Knight isn't a hard one to return. But regardless, like, like it's just all of those cards together. Okay, we're not. I, I said we were not getting into this. I have to cut this whole thing out of the video because it's completely unrelated. Um, okay, you talked a bit about uh, Math Mech, and thank you very much for that. But the thing that people are most concerned about is Marincess because uh, there's a character in Blue Angel who's going to need to use that. Um, she's fine with Trick Stars, but Marincess is, like you mentioned, a very popular cyber deck. Uh, what do you think they will do with it in Duel Links? That's a very good question. Marincess, if it comes to Duel Links, with the right cards, not their best cards, but the right cards, they could easily enter the meta. Uh, just They don't need to have their strongest cards. They just need to have certain problem, not plural, the power cards. Like uh, Rincess Wave, the trap, which makes all of your monsters unaffected, right? Uh, if we get Dive, which is a monster reborn and just a uh, reinforcement of the army. Wait, not, not re a monster reborn or a hero lives. Just summon a card from the deck, right? As long as it's Rincess and you control the field spell, right? Just depends on how much support. It could either be t table 500 level, you know? Or it could be maybe even a top three deck, depending on the format. Well, that's the big just question. Marincess, even in the three, are very playable. If they get cards such as, uh, you know, I don't think we have Blue Tang yet, or Sea Slug. We do uh, have Sea Slug. We get, oh, we have Sea Slug, okay. If we get Coral Triangle, which searches the trap, if we get the trap, like I said, even just ending on Coral Triangle with the trap is good enough, but if we get, uh, or wait, no, whatever I, the fucking Link 4 is. We have Seahorse, that's my fault. Okay. Give me a sec. We have Seahorse. We um, have Seahorse, yeah, we don't have Seahorse. Oh, wait. Okay, so, but what I'm worried about is that they don't give us Battle Ocean. And if they don't give us Battle Ocean, then that actually restricts a lot of things. If they don't give us Battle Ocean, that is a very, very bad thing for the deck. Because Battle Ocean is what makes a lot of the deck's gimmicks work. For example, you know... Alright, we were talking about Battle Ocean potentially not coming because, like you just said with Final Sigma, uh, I'm not sure that Duel Links is ready for a, like a uh, towers in the extra monster zone that just has a, a ton of attack points. Right. Um, if they don't add Battle Ocean, the deck could be pretty crippled considering a lot of the cards they have are pretty reliant on Battle Ocean. Marincess Dive's best effect, which uh, if it's only if you control Battle Ocean, special summons a Marincess monster from your deck, which is like really good, right? Uh, you need Battle Ocean in order to make monsters really, really big with Battle Ocean, considering Battle Ocean's effect is what equips things to it. Uh, monsters, the whole monster equipped the Lynx uh, mechanic with Battle Ocean is kind of what the deck is built around without the new support. Uh, if they don't add Bubble Reef, uh, there's really not much reason to use Ocean if they do add it anyways, because Bubble Reef is like the best card Duelings could have. Uh, just in general, Battle Ocean is a pretty pretty useful card the deck would love to have, but if they don't have it, I don't think it'd be very good. Well, I don't imagine but that we're going to get Aquanine. I don't know what I, I said. We're gonna get Aquanine. Well, yeah, if we, it, we're, we're likely going to get Wonderheart as Blue Angel's Ace, which actually needs Marincess Dive to be useful. Okay. I Not Dive, sorry, uh, Battle Ocean. All right. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good back and forth there. All right. Uh, don't want to take up too much of your time, so i got a couple more things to talk about here. Uh, are you good on time? I am free all night, gamer. Sweet, okay. I have no life. <laughs> all right. So next question is, uh, what is your opinion on the Salamangre Gazelle and Nerf? It's about motherfucking time. How long has it been? It's been almost four f years. Four years? Almost four years. <laughs> since 29 fucking teen. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. I... Yeah, I miss him. The, the, the power level him. of the game has really shot up. And uh, you could say that about any you know two-year two period in Dueling, or in Yu-Gi-Oh! But 
it, it seems really exacerbated when you look at all the cards that we've gotten recently. Um, to the point where even even decks like Balan Boxers have at least you know close to rogue potential, I would say. Um, so I do think that Gazelle is not that dangerous of a card, and really. <sighs> Does limiting a, a main deck card that's so searchable even really do anything when it's a once per turn? Like, you were only ever using one copy of Gazelle anyway, so. But it, it is great to see it back, so what, have you built a new list yet? For Salamangrates? Uh, not, well, yes, I, I've used them in... In some little tournaments that I participate in here and there in other servers, uh, I used one in a mono attribute deck, right? That used the new support, uh, mainly a Salamangrate uh, Weasel, in order to go and match lock, uh, considering Weasel summons a uh, Salamangrate to your opponent's field. So that you could disgusting. use that with go and match <laughs> to lock your opponent out of non fire monsters, which in a mono attribute format prevents them from summoning. Anything if they're not on like exactly Salamangrate because the best fire deck. That is uh, ridiculously cruel, but uh, good for you. I mean, but it also requires you to open not only access to uh, Weasel in either Salamangrate, Gazelle, Circle, and enough you know engine pieces to actually play the game. You also need to open the Unsearchable Three of. Okay, uh, well, fair enough. Yeah, which is not a very good. Um, I mean, with what... the new Salamangra support that recently came out, Salamangra Fire basically reduced the need for three uh, Gazelle, considering normal summon Salamangra Fire search Gazelle is full combo, right? Actually, hold on. Salamangra Gazelle is coming uh, back to three. Hmm? So, okay, yeah, in the. Um, it's true that in the uh, attribute, mono attribute thing, it would be unsearchable, but. Technically, you can search goes and match if you use the play sh Don't tell me. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking murder you. That's a joke. I'm kidding. Uh, I love the Laplacian. Laplacian's fucking hilarious. Alright, uh, okay. Do you think Salamangarit is strong enough to contend in the TCG now? Mm, sadly, as much as I would love to say, holy shit, Salamangri Tier 0, best deck of the format, rest in peace, cash tier, and nobody will miss you. It's just not up to standards with the 2023 power creep we've gotten. Even with the new support, which really doesn't do much outside of give us, like, Salamangri to fire, which is a searcher. Which, you're not even going to play at 3 anymore, considering we're going to get 3 Gazelle. It's just... Not playable this format outside of Rogue. You you could get you know tops and all that, but I highly doubt that it can beat stuff like Unchained, considering the main form of disruption that Salamangra uses is Salamangra Rage, which is a destruction card. You know, and yeah, Unchained is really love to be destroyed. They also just don't have a very strong power ceiling. Uh, considering the the normal end board is like Sunlight Wolf, Rage, and Baguska. Just go, just uh, make a hard going second deck, blind second deck, and you just always access code. You could do that in Mathmec too, with, to a better extent too, which, like, yeah. That's fair. Because <laughs> one circular, one circular equals access code talker OTK. I mean Which, that's that's just every cyber's deck. For normal summoning Gazelle. <laughs> that's it's just... true every cyber's deck except for Marincess. Except for Marincess, they get waterlocked. Yeah, that's that's the funny part. Like Marincess is the only real <laughs> the only real deck that doesn't love other cyber's decks. Um okay. It's the only deck that gets locked out of Cybers and Cybers, which is fucking hilarious. They really said, fuck you Fuck you, Blue Angel. You have the worst screen. You have the least screen time in the entire anime. You have some of the worst decks. We're not. We're not talking about Trickstar here. You have some of the worst cards you use. You're the worst character in all of the reigns. You know. Now you get <laughs> waterlocked, so no cybers for you. It's just like. And they they gave they her dirty soul in a in a match that had no stakes. 
that Soulburner could have easily lost. They gave Soulburner a card that prevents him from taking burn damage as long as it's less than 300. Like, he main decked that. And it did nothing else. Friendly reminder. Friendly reminder that in order to lose a duel, they had to write Soulburner to forget what a card did. <laughs> he literally pulled a Yu-Gi-Oh! Players Can't Read. I mean, that's relatable, though. I mean, it's all happened. It's happened to all of us, you know? All of us have had that happen to us. Man, oh, no, no. The I can't wait yeah, okay. to, you know, link time into Access Code Talker. In fact, just recently, um, I was doing the Access Code package line where any two cyber monsters equals Access Code Talker, right? Yep. Considering it's two cyber monsters into Splash Mage. Splash Mage revives one of those monsters. Splash Mage plus the monster into Transcode Talker. Transcode Talker revives Splash Mage. Transcode Talker plus Splash Mage into Access Code Talker, which gains 3,000 attack because Transcode's link 3. And you have two cards in Graveyard with different attributes to banish for Access Code. So it's two pops. Plus it's 5,300, you know. However, Transcode Talker's effect to revive a monster can only be activated if you haven't summoned a non cybers monster, and you can't summon non cybers monsters during the turn you activate it. Guess what I had summoned on my opponent's field? Uh, summon on your opponent's field? A, a kaiju? Yes. Oof. Yes, I summoned fucking Gamma Seal on my <laughs> opponent's side, and then tried to go into Transcode into the access The turtle code, locked you out of access like, code. Fuck. <laughs> the turtle locked me out of access code, and it made me mauled, and it lost me the game. And this was also in tournament, by the way. Oh, man. This was also in tournament. I am so in sorry. In semis, too. You're, you didn't even it mention was, was Update me, Jammer, either. Um... <clears throat> oh yeah, actually you're right. I actually thought I thought about update jammer when I when I mentioned splash mage, but I wanted to give the more condensed version of the line for the people who don't know. Yeah, but I mean, there, so update jammer is how you OTK with access code. Access code being fifty three isn't enough. You want to give access code two attacks with update jammer, which is again really easy to do if you are playing specifically cybers. Which is why even though access code is like used in basically. Every deck that Link climbs that doesn't like lock itself into synchros or something, uh, access code is particularly deadly in cyber decks. Um, okay, so let's wrap things up here. Is there yes. anything um, that else that we haven't talked about that you want my audience to know about yourself? All right, go ahead. I really like Nightmare Corruptor Ably. If you've seen me in Discord, you've seen my profile picture, you've seen my Discord pronouns, and you've likely seen my bio. Yeah, I love Ibli. Just she's such a fucking hilarious card. I'm I'm just gonna I'm, uh, I'm just gonna what for, else, what else? I'm gonna have the artwork of Ibli's feet on the screen while you're saying this, just so you know. No, please don't. I don't actually care about Ibli for the card art. I find her just funny. The card. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. Do you want to shout out any of the girls? Smug ass little face. <laughs> uh. Yeah, shout out the Code Talker Guru. He's the best one out of all of them. Uh, okay, no, but it's for real. Shout outs to Cubes. Shout outs to, you know, you for hosting this, you know, for having me here. Shout outs to Kevin. If it weren't for Kevin, I wouldn't be a guru. And shout outs to, most specially of all, Chaos Thunder Theorist. I'm only a guru because of a chance meetup that we had. In a King of the Hill, in a streamer's uh, Twitch stream that we, I was dominating, and he beat me with Thunder Dragons. And then he, we talked, and then he sent me an invite link to Guild of Gurus, and the rest is history. Ah, okay. All right, well, uh, thank you very much for right. sitting down. Uh, uh, this is down. the Code Talker Guru, his, uh, his Discord on our... His channel on our Discord is the... Code Talker Terminal. Code Talker Terminal. And you can join and talk to him anytime you want. Uh, I'll have a link for the Guild of Gurus server in the description. Uh, my name is Serafi. I was thrilled to have you all with me.